Monica, good morning. How are we doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Just rocking and rolling, figuring it out. Awesome. So what's up? How can so, I help? So as a conservative Christian, how do I teach my kids accurate information on LGBTQ plus issues while maintaining biblical teachings on the subject? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so dig into that a little bit. Tell me what's behind that. Um, just my kid, one of my kids is getting older and how old? Um, a ten. Okay. And it's something that's going to start coming up more and more as she gets older. I want her to have um, good information so she can know, you know, what other people might be going through if it comes up for her, what she might be going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just so that we can raise them with a Christ-like compassion to where they can love, um, have the love of God in all mankind. Hmm. Number one, I love your heart here, man. It's, it's so good to hear. There feels like there's another side to this. So are you, are you afraid that teaching them hospitality is going to set them up in a... Like, what, what, what's the other, the or what part of this? The or what part of it is probably, um, you know, okay, this sounds terrible, but, you know, what if they come out? What kind of mom am I going to be? Mm-hmm. Am I going to mourn that and not support them? You know, obviously they're young. I don't know. They don't know. But if it does come up when they're older... Um, you know, how do we navigate that if hmm. that comes up? So is this more about you wanting to teach them? Is this more about you prepping for a conversation that you, almost pre-worrying about a situation that may or may not come down the road someday? Yeah. And then my own, I'm trying to navigate through my own discomfort okay. with the issue as well. Well, number one, I appreciate you being honest and being brave. Um, Early on in the show, we received a number of phone calls, and I, I finally just asked uh, on this topic, and when I was still practicing, so those shows didn't air just because I was terrible, didn't know what I was doing. Um, but one time I just asked, hey, why are you calling me? Like, why don't you ask your friends? And the response was haunting. The response was, Deloney, I got nobody to ask. And I, I've just been so fortunate to have such great community over the years. And so I, I, I'm so grateful that you reached out. I know so many folks are, are working through this and thinking through these, these things and wanting to be graceful and loving. So, um, to answer your first question, you're going to love your kid. The fact that you're calling lets me know that you're going to, you're going to love your kid. Every mom, every dad on planet earth has this imaginary picture for their child of what that's going to look like. And 99.9% of them are wrong, right? And they're not going to look that way. And it and it's not just on this topic. In fact, it's rarely on this topic. It's about, I wanted him to be a baseball player or a lawyer or a doctor, or I thought they were going to marry somebody with dark hair or blonde hair, whatever the thing is. And so if this comes up, A, you're going to love your kid. B, you're going to mourn the picture that you had in your head. It just plopped in there, whether society put it in there, you put it in there, your parents put it in there, whatever, wherever it came from, Right. My wife talks about this future Thanksgiving table someday. And, and <laughs> when our kids come home from college and yada, yada and I just smile because it's not going to happen, but it's so fun to think about, right? So um, both of those things can be true. So here's, here's my thoughts, and I'm going to like be as honest as I can. I've got um, a lot of LGBTQ friends, and I've got a lot of community members. I mean, that's, uh, that's been my world is, is hospitality over the last... 10, 15, 20 years. So your impulse is first is right. It's hospitality first. Like just understand how hard it is for folks, whatever they're walking through each day. Um, It's just hard, right? The second thing is you can't undermine Christian teaching. You can undermine your faith's witness. And what I mean by that is as a Christian person, um, and I'm one too, so I'll speak to the preach the choir here. Um, we have to hold in our hands this idea that we are looking for truth and trying to feel and, and read and be taught truth, and at the same time recognize that throughout history we've been wrong a lot, and we've been right a lot. We do a lot of good in the world, Christian communities, a lot, a lot of good, and we've been really, really wrong. And so what I have shifted over the last decade is less of a focus on I'm being right on all these topics and issues and shifted way more towards everybody's welcome at Deloney's house. 
Everybody's welcome at my table. And we will navigate relationships together. We will navigate topics together. Um, But every one of those, quote unquote, what's the right answer will always be done in relationships, right? Um, And then just for whatever it's worth for you, there are so many, there's such a diverse array of faith-based voices out there now. Um, When you said conservative Christian, that means 50 different things to 50 different people. I'm interested in your definition. What does that mean to you? Um, I think it means more, I guess, traditional Christian. Okay. Um, so what, so I'll even push that. Like, so what does that even mean? You've got John Wesley and John Calvin and Martin Luther and the Catholic community. You I mean, that means so many things. Um, that's true. What, what is, what is that? What does that mean? So I guess when I say conservative Christian to this topic, mm-hmm. I mean, um, you know, Sorry, this is a hard topic because, you know, I feel like the worst person ever having my viewpoints being kind of behind. Um, hey, hold, hold on for a second. But, hold on a second. You're not the worst person. And here's why. You're asking questions. You are asking questions and you are wrestling with hard things, right? So you're not the worst person, right? If you were you. yelling on the side of the street, throwing rocks at people, then I would lump you into that's not cool category. But the fact that you're asking questions uh, makes you a truth seeker. And the fact that you're asking relationships to people and not to Alexa tells me you want relationships. And those are, that's, I mean, that's the two greatest things a person can be doing right now. So good for you. Okay. Um, so go ahead. Um, so, you know, traditionally marriage um, ideally is between a man and woman. Okay. I mean, um, ideally, like I, if I have friends who are in that community and get married, you know, I'll go to their wedding. Great for them. This is, you know, yeah. totally happy for them. Um, you know, but just, again, marriage between man and woman is ideal. Um, I think that's what I mean okay. by conservative Christian. So th- just the picture of marriage there. Yeah. Okay. And, and let's, like, in the relationship stuff and everything up and down and um, middle schoolers being asked to declare and what what's the right this and what's the right that. What I want to always push you back towards, which is this is where you're at, by the way, is relationship and hospitality, right? And focusing mm-hmm. less on having all the right answers and having all of the deepest relationships possible. Here's the, the challenging thing. Um, we, have, we have decided some things in our faith communities over the years over all those different branches of, of Christianity for what that means. And we have focused on some things, not focused on other things, chosen some things, not chosen. Every group has different thoughts and, and um, threads that run through it. Sexual stewardship is, is a big one. Giving is a big one. Hospitality is a big one. Loving your neighbor as yourself is a big one, right? And so mm-hmm. for you and your family, for you and your faith community, um, defaulting to relationship and hospitality. Don't be scared of yourself and what might happen with your kids someday. I can tell you right now, you're going to love your child. Y'all may have hard conversations and a uh, spoiler alert. Even if your kid ends up not being a member of the LGBT community, you're still going to have a ton of hard conversations together, right? Yeah. What is it about yourself that you don't trust about compassion, about care? Cause you sound like a um, loving person. You sound almost like you're ashamed of asking hard questions? You know, it probably goes back to the way I was raised. I was raised by, um, unfortunately, people who weren't as loving. And so I guess it's, you know, kind of ingrained in me to be judgmental and less loving. Hmm. And I don't want to be that person. You know, that's not in me who I am, but it's kind of part of me at the same time because it's what I grew up with. Hmm. But here's what's making me smile right now, and you can't see it, but I'm smiling real big because um, chances are the folks who raised you did the best they could with the tools they had in their toolkit, right? Mm-hmm. And they did the best they could with what they knew with the air they were breathing and the water they were drinking. And what you're doing is like that old Maya Angelou quote, you do the best that you can, and then when you know more, you do better. And that's what you're mm-hmm. trying to do. Right, you're trying to be less dogmatic and more in love with people. It doesn't mean that we throw all the baby out the bathwater. There is some ways of living that we got to hang on to. Right, there is some mm-hmm. discipline and accountability and quote unquote right ways of living. There are 
And I'll go to task with anybody who says, no, dude, it's just whatever you feel, bro. It's all cool. It's not all cool. It's a mess, right? But all of that starts in relationship. And I, I don't know what to tell you other than I think you are absolutely on the right track. And here's the thing. The right track doesn't mean that you and I end up believing the same things on everything. It does mean that we end up with an understanding that we're going to treat people with respect and dignity wherever they happen to fall. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know that I'm answering your question as much as affirming you as somebody who is trying to navigate a messy, messy situation, a messy, messy world, and trying to reckon with her past and thoughts you may have had and jokes you may have told and and people you may have told off and arguments you may have thought you have won with this new person who's looking at their 10-year-old thinking, you are inheriting a totally different world than I come from. And I don't know any way forward other than to lead on love and relationship. Yes, with discipline. Yes, with it's following, finding truth and rightness as best as we possibly can. But man, it is it is love and relationship first, and then we figure out the rest as we go. I I think your I think your kids are lucky to have you as their mom. One of the that greatest lot, gifts. Yeah. Listen, one of the greatest gifts, Monica, my mom and the dad have given me, is the fact that they were both super conservative Christians over time. I would still consider them super conservative Christians. And I can't tell you the number of times they've told me I changed my mind. I was wrong on this and I need to think about it this way now. And that is a, that over the, the, the particular issue, that's the greatest gift that I look at them and they're in their seventies now and they hold really firm to some, some truths and they have said, I changed my mind on this one. Or I'm still wrestling with this one. I changed my mind and I changed it back. And now I'm thinking about changing it again. All of it has just been this loop. But for me, like I said, less than this is the way. It has been, here's how we're going to approach it. We're going to try to figure it out. We're going to always be trying to read something that makes us uncomfortable. We're going to always be trying to have hard conversations. We're going to always be meeting with the least of these and the marginalized and those who are hurting in our communities, whoever and wherever they end up being. And then we're going to try to wrap our heads around what that means in light of this ancient text that we hang on to. And we're going to be challenged and frustrated and ask hard questions. And we're going to come back to love and we're going to get angry and we're going to have to look at our neighbor and say, Hey, I totally disagree with you. I actually, at the end of the day, have worked hard on this. And I think this is, this is a universal truth here, but come over and, have a glass of wine and we're going to figure it out. You're always welcome at my house. And man, I think your kids are lucky to have you, Monica.